Yeah. And he said, all right, brother, you and me. <laughs> Dude, I mean, he didn't miss a beat. It was awesome. It's good to finally see the whites of y'all's eyes. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, it's good to meet yeah. you. <laughs> we, were like, we were talking, coming over here to like Giddy's, like we're coming over here to meet Elvis. Yo, I don't know about that. I got the taco cat shirt on. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's an anagram. That's unbelievable. Right? Why yeah. is an anagram not an anagram? <laughs> Taco right? Cat. It's Taco right. Cat spelled backwards. Yeah. So Unbelievable. that's why I'm here for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, we're here at ATA at the Bear Booth, and I'm sick, so I'm going to do a little bit of coughing. We've got Troy, also known as Ranch Ferry. That's yeah, me. check out Ranch Ferry on YouTube, guys. Yeah. It's freaking sick. Highly it's recommend awesome. it. You're going to get fired up listening to this podcast. Thank you. You're going to learn something. Yeah, you're yeah. going to yeah. learn something. Hopefully, that's the goal. The goal is to help everybody become more effective. Yeah. That's yep. my whole goal about the whole channel. I guess the last few seasons we were leaning towards shooting fixed blades, heavier arrows, but then Just there's a lot more science behind it. Yeah. This year. We've been on that path for a while, and then all of a sudden find Ranch Ferry on YouTube, <laughs> and so it just changes our world. Yeah. When we've, as we've talked, and I've seen y'all's videos, y'all take short shots. Yep. You, you take the right shots. You're not irresponsible. You're not just flinging out your freaking flappers and your <laughs> Twizzlers and praying to God you wound them to death. <laughs> We're I'm, not, I'm not, I mean, that's funny and all, right? And I'll say some yeah, crazy yeah. stuff, warning. We'll, we'll put so, some text. We'll yeah, like right. have the Ranch Ferry lexicons. We'll yeah. put some text so you know <laughs> what he's talking about. Do I need to explain the Ranch Ferry yeah, no, language? No, you should. Yeah. You should. Right flapper out is, flapper means? Flapper means a mechanical. A Twizzler is when you're shooting a 400 spine arrow through a 70-pound bow because it, at impact, it turns into a metronome, so that's a Twizzler. <laughs> if I, and then they've got to do the arrow chart real quick. So my arrow chart is like a shotgun shell box, just to make it easy on y'all. So anything under 450 is a skeet load, which means it's fun to shoot at targets in 3D, but, you know. And then 450 to 550 is what I call a, a heavy dove load. That's when you're starting to stop, you know, you stop wounding stuff to death. Yep. And above 550 is an adult arrow, and then over 650 above Dr. Ashby's bone-breaking threshold is a magnum, and uh, they are definitely different. I'm also mm -hmm. a board member of the Ashby Foundation. Oh, you are? I didn't, I, I didn't realize right. that. So you all okay. will be hearing more about us. We're going to uh, start up the testing. Dr. Ashby and I have become friends. He lives about four hours from me. Yeah, we've listened to a you lot know, of stuff with oh, him, too. The dude is just... So much info. I mean, he was a PH... And then, of course, his test is only 27 years. <laughs> of test. And like how many animals? You know, yeah, right. 1,900 uh, animals that were shot, and yes. I don't know how many test shots. Yeah. So you'll be hearing more about that. Yeah, That's excellent. That's awesome. So why don't you tell everybody, too, about like your situation hunting-wise and like where you live and how Ranch Yeah, what's Ferry the channel all about? about tell them about, about that. Okay, no problem. So we have a ranch in South Texas, and I've called myself the Ranch Ferry for 10 years. And because I'm the ranch manager. So if toilets broke or the coffee maker doesn't work, you know, make dinner reservations, that's me. <laughs> Which is fine. It's a labor of love. I'm actually kind of wired as a servant to people. Excellent. So it's pretty easy for me to do. Mm -hmm. And I just said, just call the ranch ferry. And it was just something everybody called me, my family. So my wife is the eldest of 10 kids, 38 nieces and nephews. I had 65 people for Christmas at my house. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so I'm pretty much an outfitter yeah. for no pay. <laughs> and... I killed a Pope and Young deer 10 years ago with a friend of mine on a place, low fence. It wasn't one of the Texas high fence rig deals. And I, I lost it. I just don't care to shoot deer. Now my nephews are eight. Take them out with the 243 and shoot it. I'll find a deer for them to kill. It's just, I'm, yeah. I'm as in on it as they are. Yeah. Right. I find that to be more rewarding mm -hmm. currently. Mm -hmm. But big pigs, whoo, we have an understanding. <laughs> I'm me and you're a pig. And you need to get shot. Right? <laughs> and the big, big feral hogs are not, you don't just go out there and have them walk up in front of you. It's like hunting a big white tail. Yeah, they're smart. I got cameras up. I start targeting a certain pig. And I bet you I'll see them twice a year. And what happened to me was failure. It wasn't for lack of broadheads or trying. And this is deer feeder shots, 17 yards. You'll get, you can just wait and get the shot you want. Mm -hmm. And I kept losing them. There was nothing else to do. The only thing I had left to do was read Dr. Ashby's stuff. That's the only book of literature that has any backing that says this works when you fail. Hmm. On actual animals. On yes. animals, yeah. not yeah. foam or shooting car hoods and all that stupid stuff. 
Yeah. Save the bricks, right? <laughs> so I shot a pig. I've got a video on mine. It says mechanical versus high FOC or something. I don't remember the name of it. Sorry. It's one of my first videos. And I shoot this pig. He weighs 225. He's five feet long. He's about this deep in the chest. And yeah. I shot him with a schwacker at 17 yards, and I bent the schwacker. Hmm. It hit, hit the ribs. It pitched forked like that, hit the rib cage, stopped. And when he ran off, it flew out. I mean, I'm talking right in the show, right where you should shoot him. And I said, I'm done. So I spent two weeks, and I said, I'm going over 650. I'm going single bevel, and I'm going to do what Ashby said. What year is this, roughly? This is 90, uh, 2015. Okay. So I get a 300 spine arrow. I got no help. I got nobody to teach me to so do anything. So this is all just trial and error. It's just me in. trial and error, tuning, sure. all that stuff. I spent days getting at the bear shaft. Finally got that to work. I get an arrow at 760. I've got the Kodiak on there, which is what he shot. I filed it, even made it narrower because yeah. he shot it mm -hmm. at an inch wide. Right. Hmm. That same pig comes out. I said, here we go. I mean, if this doesn't work, I'm just going to go back to guns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was yeah. at one time I was 30 percent oh, effectiveness wow. on big ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So if all you clowns that shoot pigs and they're like your Internet 300s, but they're this long, you can shoot those with anything. Talk about the adults. So he comes out, same spot, same blind, and it buries to the fletching. And I look out the window, and I see dust. And he went 60 yards. And I said, hmm. Something's different. Something's different. In the last 10, we've killed over 200 pounds. We're 10 for 10. Yep. And that's everybody shooting the real stuff. It's, just, it's all about impact. Yep. And survivability of the broadhead. Mm -hmm. So I just never turned back. I'm shooting 760 now. I'm probably going to run it up to 900 just to see what happens. Yeah. 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 But for the distances y'all are talking about shooting, I don't think y'all felt handicapped. No. No, I mean, we mm. pretty much shoot 30 yards and in, and obviously it's mostly whitetails. The analogy that you used is like once you r really believe in this stuff and you switch to the heavier stuff, as far as arrows and broadheads, it's like shooting with a gun almost. <laughs> it is like shooting with a gun. I'm not telling you to be irresponsible. I'm just saying when you get uh, – there's a lot of quartering. Too. I look at Jaws' videos, and when I – I'm, I'm weird, so I'll skip over all the stuff, and I just want to see the shot, and I'm looking at things that no one's paying attention to. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at, is there ass this way? Right. That's a quartering in shot. Yeah. You've just moved the lungs are like this. You've just moved the lungs are like this. You just moved them like that. Yeah. Well, like that. But the arrow's now going to go like this if you shoot them center mass. You have to, sh you have to come forward – or you don't punch your tag. Yep. And I'm okay if you if you choose not to shoot the angle because you're being ethical. Good. That's right. Fine. Yeah, that's, that's good. Right? That's I mean, right I think that's decision. fine. Yep. Yep. Don't go around wounding stuff. I'm not telling you that. But but if you have the setup, you should be able to if you make have that the kill setup, shot. Correct. And, 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 and not just not just make a kill shot, but make a really ethical, clean, like a very fast kill because you're putting it right in there and you're hitting that's some pretty, pretty oh, devastating in. stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah, I have a, vi a video called The Vital V. And I actually disassemble an animal. I'm a respiratory therapist, so I know more about the pulmonary system than 99% of you. I've had a human heart and lungs in my hand for six months. <laughs> and we were studying how to keep you alive if you got a hole in your body. Yeah. <laughs> so reverse engineering the other part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all of the, the lungs far forward, there's a guy who's got something called masterpiece archery targets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. mm -hmm. The worst. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The man hyperinflates the lungs with an artificially high level of pressure and makes them almost twice normal size. The diaphragm is missing in his box so that lungs can go further than they are. That's where I'll stop. The lungs on that target are half of that. Okay, enough bashing. Anyway, when you g if you can't shoot forward where the very lethal larger vessels and where all the cardiac and pulmonary tissue is much more vascular, mm -hmm. you're just going to have longer blood trails, and you can't control those either. So when you get these quartering two shots, you can aim point on, and you can break this inside piece. You can surely hit the edge of the scapula and just punch right through. Mm -hmm. And the single bevel is the top of the line for that. Yeah. As far as, I mean, it's just... It just I mean, gives you more These arrows are the first deer I shot with it was a uh, buck in Missouri. 
the first buck I shot was, was at 25 yards, and he was standing in the edge of a creek bank, and it blew straight through. I mean, it hit him perfect. Yep. It's like right in the center of the I remember it. Yep. And he takes off, and I can see the Luminoc down there, the lighted knock, whichever one I had, was down there glowing in the, in the mud. And I got down there, and that sucker was buried deep in the yep. mud. Yep. Like, but I mean, like it was a target. Like, well, I had to pull it out right. of it. Mm -hmm. Is that new? After it's you, you're acting it. like that's a new experience. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I used to shoot I used to shoot 80 pounds with, like, a 30-some inch arrow and a, a lot of momentum. Yeah. You know, with a 125-grain head. And I got some really good results with pass-throughs. But even with that, occasionally a mature buck would, like, the arrow would stop in the animal. Yep. And mm -hmm. it would not that's go That's impact paradox. Through. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you? I mean... My, well, we talked a little bit before we started the podcast, but my experience going back to starting bow hunting in 1995, so about 25 years, <laughs> that was before expandables were popular, so a shot fixed blade heads, yep. almost all pass-throughs, pulling arrows out of the dirt, that was normal for all yep. of our bow hunting yep. group. Yep. All of a sudden, expandables get yep. popular, start shooting you know, rocket broadheads and stuff like that. Still yeah, lighter setups. Killing, lighter setups, still killing game. A high, very high recovery rate. You know, We take ethical shots, but all of a sudden, I'm either not passing through or barely yeah. passing through, definitely not burying in the dirt. Yeah, and, I, and as I look back at my videos but from the last 10 years, you know, I've taken close range shots at bucks and not passing through them. Yeah. I Killing have. them, but not passing through. And then when I grew up know. bow hunting, you know, my dad would, we shot fixed blade with aluminum arrows when I first started. Yeah, you're shooting 550, you don't even know it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, and we were yep. passing through stuff and I yep. wasn't shooting, I was shooting a low poundage bow. Yep. But then, same deal, few years, I've, I only shot one pack of mechanical broadheads, or two, I'm sorry. There were some rocket broadheads and then rage broadheads. And every time on the video, when I shot deer, this happened. Correct. And that made what otherwise would have been a good hit had it passed directly through, made it now a hit that, oh, we got to give him some time, which I hate that. I don't want, I want to shoot a deer for him to go down. Oh, and I ha I've had good pass-through, broadside, quartering away shots with fixed blade broadheads. I went back to fixed blade the last few years. I've had really good, like, You're doing fine. Your stuff's flowing right through. Yeah, right? a slick trick with a full metal jacket. But I don't know that I have what it, my setup has, what it takes to get through that front shoulder, and that's something that I'm looking to do. So the, the two adjustments you, most, uh, most people need to make, you need to put all the weight in the, forward, in the front. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you're seriously trying about every shot angle on earth, single bevel heads are the, are the top thing. Yep. That's it. The head you're shooting is fantastic. Yep. That cutthroat. Everybody says that's a great head. I just talked to the Iron Will guys. That is a double bevel head, but it is built to do what we're talking mm. about. But it does not have the rotational piece. Right. But that's through soft tissue or through bone. Yeah. I oh, usually yeah. get one rotation in about 16 inches. Yep. So it'll enter here and come out. Like it's almost turned, but what happens is, in very mobile tissue, it winds up. It's so it's not it's not cutting as it goes through. The tissue's actually grabbing onto it, and it's it's grabbing it and doing extra damage. Explain more trauma. Explain yeah. the arrow efficiency thing to people. You mm -hmm. know, because when you in what you're observing, apples to oranges. You know, like light arrow setup, mechanical lightweight broadhead, heavy broadhead, heavy arrow setup. The arrow is so much more efficient. So let me like break that you, down. Yeah. yeah. When you, what okay. do you yeah, What do you do hear? That. Like, what do you see? With so I actually tested this. So on my channel, I'm just gonna keep pumping the channel because I have an educational channel. There's a lot of stuff. Good. So stuff. I have an impact paradox cha video. Y'all need to, if you're listening to this, go to my channel. I'm totally self promoting. I got it. No, you no, you <laughs> should because I got it, bro. You've got, <laughs> you've got all the you've got all the things in more detail than what we're gonna cover. Yeah, in right. This yeah. Sure. Well, that's yeah. not what y'all do, and that's why we. Right. collaborate together so i have an impact paradox video so i shoot a standard arrow with an aluminum insert and 125 grain point into a target and you can see it hit the target and the arrow does this and i slowly go up to a 1035 grain arrow with a 600 grain field point that is man stuff right there <laughs> it's a spear. i've got 600 grain bishop broadheads and i've shot two pigs with them and it's like they're not there that arrow's just, you could outrun it. It goes out of my, out of my fast bow. And it's just, <laughs> whoop. It's, it's just hard to believe, right? I mean, it's pretty critical. I'll give you that. But the 1,035 grainer, I mean, you just, the fletchings just, they don't do anything. So that is because 
around 20% FOC. Dr. Ashby swears it's 19, and he studied it, so we'll call it 19, but 20 is easy because I'm not smart. <laughs> um, the, point just, <laughs> the point starts pulling the shaft. Yep. It pulls it through the arrow. It is pulling the arrow into the target. So all of us have probably handled a hammer. Yeah. And when you hit a nail from the backside and you miss it a little bit, it either bends or goes sideways. So when you shoot a, a balanced system at about 10%, it'll hit, and the arrow is pushing the broadhead. And if it hits something, eh, because bones are nothing's flat. There isn't a bone in the animals. It's all rhomboids and edges and angles mm -hmm. because it's all for pressure vertically. Mm -hmm. It's not about impact. Mm -hmm. It's all about the vertical pressure from walking around. So it'll hit something, turn, and then it goes like this, yep. and the shaft loses energy, and it's yep. wobbling in the hole. Yeah. I mean, literally, if, okay, so you go rage, <laughs> but, your, but your arrow's wobbling like four inches. It's hitting the meat. Yeah. So you got the immediate dump of energy from the wobble, yep. and then it's whacking on the sides, and it just stops it. So what you want to do is load the front of the arrow, have that, you're, you're, you're shooting a bullet with a tail. Yeah. Yep. And when you get over 25% mm -hmm. FOC, which mm -hmm. takes a little bit of, it just, the arrow flight's unbelievable. And you may have seen that. Oh, yeah. I they, don't know if your like groups darts. have shrunk. or They're like darts. I, I shoot them at, at 55, 60 yards on the range, and it's just, they fly almost better than my field points did before on my, you know, lighter yeah. setups. Mm -hmm. the, well, with they, the broadheads on them. I mean, and I, but that's another thing. Like, I followed a lot of your videos when I was tuning. Like, you have an, the entire process, and that's the thing. People get intimidated when they're like, ah, heavy arrow setup, you know, those fixed blades, are they going to fly good? Because that's just the marketing push for years with, with mechanicals. Oh, you can slap one on and you just shoot. Field point, point, yeah. field point, field point, field point. Like you've talked about it before, mechanicals are extremely effective when they work. Oh, uh, they're fantastic. Yeah. I, <laughs> I killed a black wildebeest to death with one <laughs> in Africa. I smoked him. Yeah. But they continued to be either. It was either hero or zero. Right. Mm -hmm. I right. didn't get. That's a good I, didn't, I never it. got yep. decent blood trail or whatever. It was either rage commercial or zero. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And right. that was my experience. I there. feel like that is yeah. the experience. And that's the thing. Like. Well, everybody's always talking about, you know, accuracy, accuracy, accuracy is number one, shot placement's number one. And, yeah, you're, you're right. You can kill them with a field point if you hit them perfect. That's correct. Um, shoot them in the head. But you're, no, you're <laughs> not, I mean, if you bow hunt long enough and you shoot at enough stuff, you're not going to hit everything perfect. Mm -hmm. You're going to have issues. And when you have those issues, the problem is magnified when you have correct. light arrow in correct. one of those broadheads. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have the less the issues if you can shoot tighter to that shoulder where oh, yeah. there's more vital – Stuff I just aim on. at the heart every time. Yeah. I've stopped worrying about it. Yeah, yeah and that's no I matter mean, how the animal's oriented or whatever. Nope. You just put it where it needs it to be. Yep. And then when they're courting away, I'm trying to break the offside. Yep. My yep. goal is to see them see their leg come up yep. and anchor that broad head. Usually it doesn't break the offside because everything's pushing away and it actually mm -hmm. catches the shaft. It's real hard to get a pass through on the opposite side when you bang it into here because yep. everything's going like this and grabbing it. Yep. It just yep. happens. But if I can see them go like that, and when you hit those pigs, when you're shooting on the ground, you hit those pigs cornered away like that and you anchor it in here, their butt turns sideways and they kind of run kind of, they're like a bad uh, <laughs> fire engine. <laughs> the guy in the back's not steering real well. And they and you got them, man. It's, you know, they're I'm toast. just like, I just wait 10 minutes, walk over there. Yep. They're down. Yeah. Yep. So our goal is for y'all to kill those deer in a freaking hurry. Yeah. And Jake's first deer, deer he shot in that field of uh -huh. whatever. Canola. Canola. Yep. That deer was down 10 seconds. Yep. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it didn't yep. even know what hit him. No, the deer was jumping in that field. If y'all have seen that video, go back and look for it. But it's jumping in that field because it, it's just it's running naturally. It needs to see. So if it was running from you, it wouldn't have gone head down through it. He would have bounced so he could see what he's doing. That deer's running like he didn't know what happened. Yeah, yeah. And let's and all talk of a sudden about he just that. goes wang. Let's talk about that for a minute before we go back. I, we're going to talk about, like, how you get these setups. It's not intimidating. There's a lot of tips that you've no. got on that. But that's, uh, that's a really good point. When you hit them with a light setup and it – bonks them as you say you hear that pop and it just is like a slap yep. it's like and that's shocking to the deer right i mean right. that's making them the deer go, you what killed this year me? with the stinger he didn't know what the hell happened to him you shot that oh. deer cord in the way it went through a very hard piece of him yep. up here oh yeah, yeah. yeah. both you, of my shot the, the one in missouri just ran, he bounded up on yeah, top sure. of the hill then i heard him stop 
and then he right. crashed. Right. You know, he just bounded up there and was looking around, not knowing what happened, then he fell over dead. The next one in Iowa shot him, ran 40 yards, and turned around and was looking around, and I shot him right. again. Yep. So why is that happening? What is the difference between that slap with mechanical and the what's the difference between that and the, the single bevel? Contact. So you get the slap. Contact. You get the slap. Obviously, the mechanicals are deploying like a parachute and hitting them, and then when they when they start to wobble, you're getting some shaft deflection that they just that's super unnatural. Listen, deer run into sticks all the time and stuff bites them, and I mean it's mm -hmm. an everyday part of life. With a lighter setup, even with a, like a four blade head, it's and those punch points. They're just not efficient on entry. We do it uh, with the Ashby Foundation. We needed to do this on a video. So we have an elk hide, and we have a Rage, and we have some four-blade. I don't know. It's, it's one of the name brand guys, like a Muzzy or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then we have a German Kinetics. You can't physically push the Rage through the hide. Sure. You, we have to hold on to it and lean into it like this, and it will not go through the, hair, the hide. Yeah. Just the hide. Yeah. And you take a German Kinetics and you go like this and it literally shoots through. <laughs> so the heads are obviously cutting point, very sharp, very efficient. Mm. The single bevels, if they hit bone, it just pops. You can't hear them hitting. No. You no, can't they, and hear they, blow, them hit. they blow through so quick, the animal literally doesn't know what happened. And the like hunter, I've got a, I've, one of my guys who shoots the recurve, shoots like 800 grains and you know, shoots the cutthroat and some tough heads and stuff. And he's got a video he just sent me, and he shoots through a pig, and you hear it hit the log. So you hear it hit a log, but you don't hear it hit the meat. Yep. Mm -hmm. So what you have is an animal that knows something happened, but they don't know what happened. And that's to your advantage. So your yeah. deer, that one you shot quarter away, kind of hopped, and then he just kind of slowed down, and then, doop, yep. lights are out. Yep. You had a great blood trail. I don't care about blood trails. Kill them in 60 yards. Yeah, mm -hmm. you see them go down. And everything else is easier. So right. you should, you should be aiming forward, more deadly shots. You should. Your goal should be to kill them quick first and hope you get a blood trail. So that have commented on it that are just like they swear by the opposite logic. You know, that's they, fine. They say you know <clears throat> their broadheads and arrows have all moved forward and innovated for a reason, Understood. and they've, you know, and it's it's to improve your blood trails like you guys are shooting the old stuff that and you're not going to get good blood trails you're going to start losing deer because you're not going to get a good blood trail and it's like that you couldn't pay me to shoot a mechanic they don't understand what you're talking about <laughs> they're not thinking about it's that fine. yeah yeah i've been counterculture my whole damn life man yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I all i care about is if it works the best right yeah, yeah. And that's I don't give a crap about all this crap. That's what on. I think the biggest deal here is, like, we've all of us have shot the other stuff. Yeah. Correct. And we've had issues with it. And now we're going to this. and Visible issues because we're, we're all filming, too, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. we can see what's you actually have happening. the video. Yeah. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. So, and I'm just playing devil's advocate here because we've got all of the comments I from every, every single camp on all imagine. that stuff. And they'll say, well, what happens when you accidentally hit them back? It's like the animal, the arrow flies through them so quick. And so efficient that they don't go tearing out of there. They bound off and they realize they're hurt and they bed down. And like mm -hmm. that's usually what happens when you have a marginal like liver hit or a gut shot or something. And you have to treat that as you would any other time. That's correct. You know, you have to give them time. If you make a then, mistake, you make a mistake. Yeah. And you're going to do that sometimes. But I think that's been the misconception is like, well, the broadhead can save me <laughs> if I make a mistake. Yeah. We've seen all sorts of deflection issues yeah. off of ribs, off of those bones. You should front. not be deflecting off a rib. If you people are shooting an arrow and you're used to seeing a rib hit where you hit them perfect and your arrow redirects, you need to – it's really I, – I, it's, it's unacceptable. Yeah, yeah. it, it yeah. is. We've all, I think we've all experienced that. Because it could years. go back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've right? had, if we've if had you can happen. make it deflect forward – Oh yeah! Hell yeah! yeah. It happened, it happened to me two side, times in a row on a broadside yeah. shot. Hit kind of I don't know, probably three inches off of the V. Two in years, two years in a row. In the back center the of thing. the rib cage, and that thing, when you watch it in slow motion, it turns at the rib and goes back and buries to the fletching. Yep. And it came out in his right hip mm -hmm. on what? the other side. Yeah, five years ago. Yeah. That was a terrible. But, but if you get it, but shot, if you could get it to turn forward every time, we'd have us a magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you'd know? be making a broadhead company. <laughs> yeah, turns yeah. towards the heart every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's controllable. No, yeah. it's not. 
Something but I just it. think, like, if you'd have had a heavy arrow and a cut on contact of some kind. Oh, it would have been fine. Yeah, honestly, if I'd have just had a dang slick trick on there, yeah, it would have been yeah. fine. It would have yeah. been, been fine. Those are good hands, the one too. Thing, yeah. The yeah. one thing that we haven't really talked about, it's been, like, mentioned briefly that I see is a huge issue with every mechanical I've ever picked up. I don't have the toughest hands in the world, but I can grab a mechanical, any one of them, and squeeze the thing hard, yep. and that's I don't right. get cut. Mm. That's right. Yep. That's that's BS, man. It's just I don't want to shoot they're a made of thinner that, steel, and it's not high quality. It's stuff. just not it's sharp, just but not a, whatever it is, it's not sharp. Of, and I don't know that they're all like that. I mean, every one that I've handled, I'm not afraid of. If I, I pick a mechanical I've up, I'm not afraid of. You getting need to cut. touch them up, right? Yeah. yeah. I've heard you talk about sharpness and how that. You know, if you're wanting a better blood trail, like that's one thing you can do to yeah. help improve. And it so makes that, sense. That compounds Clearly. the damage. Right. So you don't want to just lacerate major vessels. You want to lacerate everything, everything. that touches. Yep. Broadhead sharpening is an art, and you really mm. got to spend some time. And it should be able to – you should be able to pick up a piece of paper, put your edge on there, and go like that, and it should cut right effortlessly through it. And if you can't do it, you need to – figure out how to get it there. Yep. Yep. If it, even if you, when you run it through a piece of paper, if you hear it's still not there. Yep. It may cut it, but it's just hanging a little bit. It should just be yep. razor. It needs to be like that. And that will help blood trails on every broadhead. If you get any broadhead out of the package, you should touch them up. Yeah. And yeah. you did, you talked about that. Mag, right? yeah. There was a noticeable difference in the sharpness between out of the package and right. what I touched up. Right, and I was doing a rubber band test. Not, a, I didn't do the paper test. No, rubber bands are rubber, fine. Yeah, just take it out of the package and put it on a rubber band. It's a, it's a test medium. Yeah, that's your base test, right? Yep. And then sharpen it up and see how quickly it cuts it. Yep. You can see the improvement. And I'm a huge fan of the Magnus stuff. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That freaking Black Hornet is the foamer, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we were looking for, at it earlier. For a freaking over-the-counter head, holy crap, that thing does a lot of damage. Mm. It's na I hated that thing when I saw it first. When Mike sent those to me, I've been, been in partnership with them forever. I like too short, too blunt. The bleed blades are dumb. I'm wrong. I don't know why. Oh, <laughs> that thing is evil. <laughs> I've got them. I got a dozen of my waiting when clown shows up at the ranch. I'm like, <laughs> nah. <laughs> I don't know what go. that is right there. <laughs> <laughs> wanka, wanka, wanka. But you're not shooting that. You know, put the hornet on there. Yeah. I mean, it gets. Really